Hello and welcome to another Blender tutorial brought to you by the Lois Art. My name is Emmanuel Okafo and I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. In this Blender tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys how to export animation from Blender into Mixamo, sorry, into Marvelous Designer and then export the cloth simulation back into Blender for your projects. So this is the final result we'll be going, um, we're trying to achieve um, from this tutorial. So let's get started. I will go ahead and remove this animation and delete this closed asset and we can start from scratch. So a couple of things or one of the most important thing you have to bear in mind is the scale of your asset. So if you if you have the time to do it, it's also it's always good to kind of scale it to match the reward scale. It will go a long way in making sure that your pipeline flows smoothly and without no problem so one way you can check your skill is to use the measuring tool inside blender so if you um, hit the space bar for your tools you have the measuring or you can also locate it right here so how this works is if you grab it you can just uh, sorry that's the wrong tool so we'll grab this tool this is it once you click on it and move it you will see the skill or the length of any object you also have some parameters to play with in case depending on what you're more fa familiar with i'm more familiar with scaling my object with fit so that's what i usually set mine especially if i'm working with a character so i can go to the scene um, the scene settings and under unit you can switch this from metri metri uh, metric to imperial so if you switch it like that then you can just drag and you can see how tall this character is so he's roughly six foot okay so now i know i'm working with um, relatively a reward scale and i can um, propagate it um, propag propagate all the scale all over the scene so um, you can always also just select it and delete it once you're done with it okay so I have my skill set and we can proceed to exporting and importing the animations so let's apply animation for the animation of using this very wonderful add-on pooper this add-on has really um, saved me a lot of time in creating quick rigs and also applying animations the rig as you can see is a standard rigified rig which is quite robust for different pipelines so you can use this either for games you can use this in your animation and you can build on top of the shriek so we'll just be looking at the animation so i have an, an animation in mind and you have different um, there are so many animations here that is broken down into deep different categories um, so we can choose any random one so let's see what adventure has for us okay so we can get this nice one i think it's a climbing animation so he's just hopping from one place to the other so let's say this is the animation we're happy with and we applied it by just clicking this button there are a lot of features that if you're interested to check out the link will be in the description so you can check it out for yourself so now we have our animation and we need to export it into marvelous designer so i already have a base mesh which i used to create this rough clothing it has a, a cape and a shirt okay so I'm going to show you how to export the static mesh that you can use to create your clothing and I'm also going to show you how to export one for your animation so for the static me mesh that you use for your clothing of course you want to go to the default pose which is this and we can go to file I usually prefer to export FBX so you have to select the object you watch, which you want to export and choose your location and you want to click on selected um, select objects um, selected object sorry and you leave the scale as default leave everything as default so you want to just click on you just want to go ahead and export your FBX okay so now we can go into marvelous designer and in the file we want to go to import FBX and you can click on this and all you just need to select is the auto scale so as you can see 
this we can repeat um, repeat this um, several times and we we are sure that we're not going to mess up our we're not going to mess up any of our assets which is pretty important if you're working in a production or just working in your own personal project okay so now you've understood how you can import your own static mesh with the right scale and you've understood that with this once you have your static mesh you can use it as a guide to just build off the rough asset and once you um, you have your animation ready you have your rig ready and you want to export the animation that's what we'll be doing right now okay so for exporting the animation we'll be using an alembic file to export the animation so we just basically want to select the object that um, has a rig and has an animation applied to it and in this scenario we are going to select this guy here so if you select that you want to go to file export export alembic so if you don't have that you want to go to edit um, preference and you go to add-on you can uh, filter stuff out by scro scrolling down to export um, anyway so if it's not if you, I'm trying to look for something but I cannot see it right now uh, but you can just go ahead and search for ABC or Alembic Um, big you should be able to see it here right there I'm not seeing it anyways um, it should be here um, yeah maybe I'm missing something for now and, um, so you want to check if you have that enabled and you want to go ahead and export your Alembic file so I have mine here so there are a couple of things you want to bear in mind the Alembic is going to export the, um, by default it's going to just um, give you the parameter it's going to input the data for you to export the already the frame here or you could go ahead and input it so it's important that you input the appropriate frame range of your animation so that all the animation is contained into the file which has been exported so we have that set uh, we can see we just have 44 frames to export and it's set here um, so that's basically all we need to do by default is going to export just the selected object um, or you could indicate it here so we can just go ahead and export this and it's going to go through the animation and once it does that we are good to go to import the alembic file into marvelous designer is quite easy so we can go to import import alembic and by default if you import a new avatar it's going to replace the old avatar which is quite convenient so I'm going to select the Alembic file which we exported, which is this one, and hit open. So you have the frame range um, to play with. So you want to make sure it matches the same uh, frame rate which you're working with. So we're working with 24 frames per second, and we need to indicate it here. Um, by default, this is what you get if this is your first time for importing Alembic. It usually will be in the millimeters, but you want to switch it to meters and once you do that and just hit ok it's going to fit perfectly okay so this works but we missed one step so as you can see in the first frame we have it um, in this animation pose but with our clothing we had it in the default pose so we need to take it back to the default pose uh, but we need to animate that too okay so to do that we can switch to our pose mode okay and select all the keyframes by uh, hitting A and grab it. So I usually grab it to about tw 12 frames. Okay, so on the 12th frame, I will just place it there. And then on the first frame, I'm going to clear the rotation, the location, and the scale and set it to the default pose. So this is what we have right now. Now I can select this character and go to file export export alembic again and same thing we did before and export that so now if we import it again import alembic so everything is still the same we can hit ok and we have it working so we have everything pretty much set set and what we can do now is just pick out the animation so you want to switch from simulation interface to the animation interface okay 
so you will see if you if you have simulated multiple animations um, you might run into a case whereby you have stuff like this and stuff like this if I play this currently you will see the old animation of the garment um, present which is um, not always the case especially if you're starting from a first scene so you you can right click you can click on this garment right click and delete it and that is that okay so we can see the animation is playing and that's perfect so we also want to reduce the simulation length to the appropriate frame now in the first frame we just set uh, we can now click on this camera icon to start simulating with the animation also for the simulation quality it's advisable to just set it to complete um, because it tends to give the best result especially with animation already applied so now we can just click on simulate so it's going to take its time and calculate all the frames and everything is going to translate nicely so this was quite fast and uh, it's um, done already um, because we just had like 44 frames and we can go back to the first frame and see our animation so you can see it started from the initial position and then it applied the animation as you can see so this is pretty solid and we can move on to the next stage we can now go back to the simulation window okay and we can just box select all of this or all the assets which you want to export once they are selected you want to go to file export and we'll be exporting it as an alembic tool um, so we have two alembic here but the one you want to go for is the ogawa or gawa alembic um, this works or this is more compatible with blender so you want to select that and i'm going to select this file which I, i'm going to save over that and hit ok so you have this export window so you could choose to export it welded or unwelded and also you can choose to export anything you like and obviously you need to set this to the scene frame rate um, this is not really important but um, it, if you set it to unweld it'll be easier to select your object um, especially if they are connected by seams or if you sew them together but on uh, welded pretty much works and for this simple scene we can get away with just welded and we can hit ok and it's just quickly going to export that since we have consistent scaling throughout our asset especially just starting from scaling it in blender importing files is just pretty much the same um, once you just understand um, what the parameters which you need to play with so to import this i'm going to go to import and import um, alembic and i'm going to select this by default this scale is set to one if i'm not wrong um, but to imp if we import this currently it's not going to the scale is not going to match though you can go in and scale it down to match your asset which works too but if you want it to be just automated um, so we go to alembic so from try and error um, which should work in your scene if you, if you scale it the right way so 0 0.001 it's going to be perfect match okay so now if we play our animation you can see it, it just works perfectly okay so alembic is a very nice way of exchanging files from different applications um, but one problem it's not very um, you have limited things that you can do to the mesh especially directly on the object for example you can go into the sculpt mode and sculpt on it um, there are software that allows you to do it to sculpt on top, uh, on top of alembic but currently blender doesn't allow you to do that um, you can go into edit mode and do shift N to recalculate the normal as you can see here we have a lot of issue with the normals so if we do shift N it doesn't really fix it and we still see it propagating here 
so I'm going to show you how you will deal with that but before we fix that let's fix the timeline um, because this is not starting from the first frame we don't want this to be the first frame we want this to be the first frame so to do that we just need to select all the animation and we can even go ahead and delete this we'll just move this back to the initial position and we can select the cloud and just click on negative 12 so because we know we remember we knew we kind of offset it offset the keyframe 12 times and now it's going to match nicely so you you probably want to play with this value So negative um, negative twelve is pretty good. Um, so you can see it matches. So let's talk about how to deal with. For some reason, this is quite offset. Uh, Anyways, let's leave that for now. Um, okay, so for the normal, um, this normal craziness that you have seen here, um, the way you fix it is you first want to go to the object data and under normals, you want to make sure you have this checked auto smooth. And we can collapse this and we want to grab the weighted normal. So as you can see right off the back, it has started fixing stuff. So we want to click on keep sharp and face influence and we have a better looking um, geometry. So for applying different materials because it doesn't come with the material so if you want to make the cape have its own material so let's do that. So we will make this the cape material. And let's give it a color of red give this color of blue okay to add the material so let's go into the uv editor because if you go into the edit mode and you select it they are combined because we welded it together but using the uv and if you enable this two arrows here you can use this as a selection method so we can quickly select that and apply that and you can see we have it applied now So um, you might have question, what about if you want to apply custom shaders? What about if you want to apply textures? Um, you want to use UV to deal with this. Um, that will be for a future tutorial. So if you're interested to, do that, see, to see that, you let me know in the comments. And tell me what you think about this workflow. Do you think it's a more convenient way to go about things compared to Blender? And if you wish to see more from me, uh, subscribe. And if you enjoyed this video, please like this video. So bye-bye for now. See you next time.